太 n e r v o u 
maybe is a creature because we haven't drawn creatures in quite some time and i was thinking that uh, we can do you know like these six thumbnails or th six concepts or ideas of a creature and for the topic of the creature let's write here creature and for the topic of that um, creature the the theme I was thinking maybe we can have one of the two it could be either like a traveling creature and it could be anything it could be the one that's traveling with humans or it's just traveling by itself or like it could be domesticated it could be a fantastical creature doesn't matter or the topic could be a helping creature and i think this one is more broad so it could be more interesting what do you think so it could be like it could be i don't know a ghost helping uh some the vampires i don't know or uh or the traveling creature it could be the i don't know the camel helping people to travel around so that would be i think the idea for today what what say you how do you think what do you think about this chat let's put the date today okay oh well <laughs> it's okay then um let's move forward with it and see if if we can actually come up with something so the idea is that we let's you know let's let's design this sheet a little bit maybe it's actually too bright right uh, let me check this Is this better? Or hmm. yeah, maybe this is a little bit better. <clears throat> Sorry about that. So um, the sig idea of sig like this six something challenge is that you basically just draw six variations of of the thing and it's up to you how much you want to vary it you can make six one six in completely different styles with different media or you can have you know like six from like different angles um six views or maybe you know like something like that or what I like about the idea of six something is that you can divide it in sub parts. You can have like, I don't know, if you're designing a character, you can have three male variations and three female variations, or you can have like, um, you know, two for each class or something. So it's actually quite nice to divide. So we're doing six helping creatures and i think i need like six frames because we will need to compose in the frames somehow the composition all that stuff and i think i will draw like six different sizes of of the frames just to have some variation now pv2 and then maybe like another four here. It looks like I'm designing a website. Oh, great. 
it. Oh, cool. Six something. Let's make a hashtag six something challenge. <laughs> um, all right, so. Helping creatures. I personally like in, in this kind of stuff, I like to have some variety. So I think I will do some of them, um, maybe some, some fantastical, some non-fantastical or maybe some like, you know, it could be, you can make them robots, you can make them, I don't know, ghouls or undead helping the Lich King or something like that. So, let's think. First, I want to get rid of the idea of the traveling creature. So, I think that's the first one that I want to design and I, I think I will sketch around this just to kind of fill in the page could be like a like a dinosaur people like dinosaurs uh, maybe yeah maybe like it's oh you know what I was talking about uh, World of Warcraft mounts and uh, recently uh, and one of my favorite mounts is this woolly mammoth it's like a traveling creature I don't remember it is, I think it's called Borean Tundra mount I don't remember exactly but it's like this huge mammoth and then he has kind of like a saddle on the top like a structure and there are people sitting there and there are some like little kind of like balconies on the sides That's one idea. A woolly mammoth. Dinosaur is helping easily. <laughs> I mean, it depends on the dinosaur, I guess. I was thinking that it's like a traveling dinosaur on, on which you can ride. To properly draw a mammoth, we probably will need to look up the references. But, okay, that's one idea. Maybe... You also can draw them in different styles. You can do one, you know, only with outlines. Or you can do one in watercolor, one in, I don't know, ink. Maybe, maybe this one has like a big, massive head. Maybe it's not really a mammoth, but kind of like mammoth-like creature. Something like that. Didn't know. Maybe it has like four legs on one side. And probably four on the other, but would be really weird if it would only have legs on one side. Yeah, I like the idea of this of this weird creature. Um, what do you think? Should I should I try to fit all of them 
in the stream or should I just do one properly and then leave the rest for later? Because oh, that's not that's not an eraser. Because I think I might need a little bit more space to draw this guy. Let's combine these two. Or at least a little bit. Maybe here will be like a super tall creature or something like that. Another... What's up? <clears throat> I mean... Good morning, Mosk. Welcome to the stream. We're drawing helping creatures today. So, um, yeah, the helping creatures. The other idea that I had for the stream was to draw, um, or to, not really to draw, but to, well, also to draw, but also to focus on the process, you know, like do the whole process properly, like do the first thumbnails and then um, like some uh, silhouettes, some other stuff, you know, like do a proper concept art process. Um, so if, if that's something you would be interested in, let me know. I mean, like I'm not a concept artist, so it would be also um, a new experience for me. But still, might be interesting, I don't know. Yeah. This guy has six legs, so there is that. I'm trying to just draw big shapes first to kind of get the idea of the scale of this creature and um, just the general silhouette. Not trying to commit too much to any line just yet. Maybe, maybe I should look up some references for elephants, because this is kind of elephant-based creature. It might have a big bushy tail, actually. Why not? Too high? Yeah, if, if you're traveling through sand, maybe it can hide the footsteps with the tail. Okay, so let's look up some references. Okay, who's who is drawing there? Nichava, you like the idea. Did you, did, do you, are you still thinking about it? I know you usually think through the idea for a long time until you do it, but also Schmelikopter. How is the drawing there? Okay, mammoth. Okay, we can see here um, with some mammoths. So I want really, I want kind of a side view, something like that. So. We can see how the legs are m made or constructed. Like there is no, for instance, I, I drew these elbows like it's a dog, kind of. 
but it's much more straight if you look here, like from the shoulder down. There is elbow number one or something. And there is wrist. Yeah, so that's that's already much better, I think. And they, if you look at the back paw or back foot, you would see that they bend it like 90 degrees. Wow, that looks broken, doesn't it? Look at this. This is crazy. I, w <laughs> I wouldn't expect their feet to bend like that. Elephants are weird. All right, um, and now the back. So I would consider the other two pairs of legs to be the back legs even though like i don't know i don't think we have a reference for a six feet elephant at least it can backfire if we google that it probably will show us some mutants or something like that So it's kind of going a little bit down here, like this. And they have, yeah, actually they have um, chest at the elbow. Wait, this is a statue. Let's look at the real elephant. stuff let's show us the side view why is there always an elephant running at you first picture you see side view okay that's good um yeah so they have like their their chest is at the elbows kind of like here and it goes down to the belly. And then the, the torso thickness is kind of the thickness of the body. Wow. Uh, of the, the torso thickness is the same roughly as the foot length or a little bit bigger. So it's kind of like this. I don't know why actually they can't jump. Yeah, look at this massive thing. Of course they can't jump. <laughs> how can how can this jump? Let's make him a little bit thinner because we don't have so much space above. and the tail maybe there is like this big brush at the end of the tail they listen through their feet by vibrations wow so advanced Look, he, he holds his back foot kind of like human does. Like if if a person is walking, that's sort of how you would draw it as well, right? It's foot here, the toes, the everything.
Just need to align the elbows a little bit. Probably the anatomy of six, how do you call it, Hex hexapedes, six feet creatures is much different than the anatomy of quadrupedes. So I don't think how much sense it makes to draw from an elephant, but don't have any other references for this kind of Yeah, so if, if do, what do you think about that idea of um, drawing some, doing some process study, you know, like draw maybe during one stream, go through the whole thing from thumbnails and silhouettes to sketching and, and all that stuff. He doesn't have enough space for all his feet. Or rather, I don't have enough space for all his feet. <laughs> What's this mask? You don't know? You don't know the idea? You, you don't have an opinion? You don't care? designing some sort of like a ship structure here, I think. Let's draw some other ears than, than elephants here. Trunk goes here. <laughs> what? I don't have an opinion. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> like actually, yeah, maybe he has even three trunks. Why not? Maybe there is one here. Rolled up a little bit. One, so that that would be the this, um, left one, and then there would be the right one somewhere there. It's very very grumpy elephant, but we need to reference the eyes as well. And there is like a big eye socket there which makes sense because elephants are big so their eyes are also big very good observation I see yeah I think I will cover him in wool so it will be like a mammoth He will, I will cover him in, in wool later. Because I think it will look cool on him.
too many legs. <laughs> why, why is it too late to make him woolly? I mean, let's, yeah, let's actually, let's draw a human for size. There is the driver of this guy sitting there. They need some sort of shade because it's really. I mean, I kind of imagine him traveling through deserts and all that stuff. Like very warm, <laughs> all that stuff. Very warm places so he would need some sort of like a light roof maybe made of blankets and kind of like a tent and then you can have like the wind chimes hanging maybe there are some there there should be like some straps here maybe huge ones because it's it's a big construction. Folds on the chest. Yeah, this. There are some parts that look more like an elephant and some parts that don't. So I need to kind of balance that out. About now. <laughs> Why poor elephant? He has six legs now. He has three trunks, it has pointy ears, what's there to complain about? Some sort of flags, could be, could be like a traveling merchant. And there will be like another strap. So one strap here, one strap around the belly. Maybe there is like a beam sticking out here. So you can stand. Mm, there should be like a staircase. I mean, he probably can help people to get in like on and off with his tusks and trunks. But does he look sad? I thought he looks grumpy like Cthulhu. Like a grumpy Cthulhu. <laughs> Body lifting for the elephant. There will be some ropes hanging here just in case you fall overboard during the sandstorm there should be some maybe some more ropes here like a net to to be able to climb maybe some really beautiful carpets or something like that there is something circus like about this All right, but I think as a sketch for helping creature number one, that's good. So we can actually, I think, I think I want to go through the rest now and then come back to this one and maybe finish it up with some watercolor or some ink. How is it going on your side? Any progress? Also, let's think. You can also think about it in the in terms of, you know, what kind of creature would be helpful for you because you know this is personal for some people it's 
Coffee and Pigeons. It's, is it a Jim Jarmusch movie? So for some people, they need help with, I don't know, homework. So it will be like a creature that does homework for them. <laughs> Although that's technically not really helping, it's more like doing for you. But some things I don't mind if would be done for me. For instance, vacuum cleaning. Let's let's make a cleaning robot based on my I have I have this um one of the you know these flat robots that drive around and clean stuff because my normal vacuum cleaner broke so I, I thought I'll try out these robots so I mean the idea of this robot is kind of simple but maybe we can explore on that and we never really draw any robots on the stream so maybe that's something that could be addressed here Nobody really likes pigeons when they see them. I think often, like, I like the the concept of pigeon, and sometimes they're funny. But I have never. Who? What? Who is eating my? What? What's going on? Oh, the the. <laughs> The robot is eating my curtains. Yeah, that's true. But it's just because he can he doesn't know if it's a curtain or or something else. I kinda don't know what I'm drawing here. I think I think he will have arms on on these joints. And the arms will be sort of like these um, brushes that, that this robot has. And like a suction tube in the middle. So it grabs everything, like it spins and grabs everything and sucks it in. No, it doesn't eat my socks because I don't leave socks laying around. <laughs> okay. Most of the times. Okay, something like that. I mean, I don't know how how good of an idea is vacuum cleaner a robot is a helping creature. How do you know? Don't judge your ideas before you implement them. Maybe. I mean, <laughs> kind of contradicts the idea of thinking before doing. Which you definitely should do. Just not overthinking. Why? <laughs> Damn it. A slave, not a helping creature. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe it's a willing robot. Maybe he. He is helping, like, knowingly. He needs some wheels, but I don't really know what kind of wheels I want to give him. Mm. 
just like this. Oh, maybe maybe he has wheels all over the place. Like he has, you know, this kind of wheels. Just needs to align at the bottom as well with the with an ellipse. Here as well, I think it should align. What's oh, going on there? Okay, nothing. Yeah. So yeah, let's see. I don't know. Maybe maybe I will still do the process stream, even though Musk doesn't have an opinion on that. Maybe it will be interesting, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see. So I need to make some room for... Some, not room, but erase this stuff in the foreground. So it's more understandable what's going on where. Maybe it's not well it does help like it's it's a helping creature from the point of view of of the owner of the robot um the process stream is the idea to go through the whole kind of like concept art process on stream you know like start with pick up some idea and then go through thumbnails and like silhouette sketches and like the kind of the design part of 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 that you know like thinking through composition and then like doing some sketches finding interesting shapes you know doing this rule of thirds stuff all the um what else is there like middle ground, foreground, trying to pay attention to fundamentals and just like kind of go through the whole process and by the end of the stream have some sort of finished product. I mean, you might say that they're all kind of like that, true, but not exactly so. Actually, I want to make it a little bit more aligned. Actually, it's surprisingly, it's close enough. You wouldn't expect me to be able to draw a straight line. But it worked out. So, four more ideas. We're kind of really good on time, because if we're drawing six, trying to do six ideas in one stream, it's kind of 20 minutes per sketch. So it's right about time to start the third sketch. third helping creature so we have a robot we have a fantastical creature what don't we have we don't have a lot of stuff so this one is helping with travel this is helping with cleaning
What else? What else people sometimes need help with? Maybe it's something like really, really specific. Like the alchemist uses help of some kind of creature to test some <laughs> explosives. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, great. It will be like an explosive turtle. I mean, it's not the turtle that is explosive, but it's the turtle that's resistant to explosions. So the turtle goes into the, or like the turtle drinks the potion and if it explodes inside, no harm done, the turtle just burps and goes away. So mm, let's, let's, <laughs> I don't know how, how, what's going on in my head. Um, let's research some turtles. Psychotherapist Otter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's actually a, a really helpful creature. Okay, let's say giant turtle. Yeah, that's kind of what I imagine when I'm thinking about explosive creature, explosive, explosion resistance turtle. Maybe maybe one of the, these ones can be psychotherapist otter. Otters are so cute. So we will exaggerate the, the back a little bit. And there is this thing here at the bottom and there is a hole for the arm then this goes back and does the same from the other side and at the back here there's like a kind of like little skirt a tur turtle skirt Maybe it protects the back back paws. I guess it does. Okay, so and then there is head. And can be I think it should be like a little bit meatier turtle than, than this one because it deals with explosions so it has to be like really chunky <laughs> actually maybe these turtles they eat little explosive flowers or something like that so it's not that the alchemists use them for that it's they also enjoy eating the explosive portions so. there's that okay what a strange creature look at these paws look at the back paw I mean leg is it the leg That's, that's broken. And maybe it's just standing its ground. Spiky. Should it be spiky? Maybe not. Maybe it should be more like a stone turtle. Hmm. 
Oh wait, you don't see much of the turtle there. My bad. All right, so oh, there is a little turtle. I didn't notice it. The back, the back legs are quite strange. I think paws are the ones like the what mammals have and legs are what, what the rest of people, creatures have. Just trying to figure out where the legs will be. if we're looking from above you won't be able like it won't be able to raise the head that high so we will see the top of the head a little bit what's up with the face oh. it's really dry. like look, look at this face it's sticking out the tongue. <laughs> the face is really snaky. This looks a little bit like a dragon. Maybe that's how dragons came to folklore. People saw turtles and got excited. Let's make it a little bit meatier. Maybe a little bit, maybe it will look a little bit cartoony, but you know, that's the beauty of this six something challenge that you can draw six different styles. Let's look at the back pose once again. Yeah, that's, that's close enough, I think. And it has some big scales on the front of the legs. And smaller scales on the sides. But we can, we can also just draw the, the big ones, the ones that are in front. And then your eye will kind of imagine the rest. You can't really, <laughs> you don't really see how is it helpful. I think to make it not just a simple turtle with eyebrows, maybe we, we need to um, work more a little bit on the, on the body. So let's, let's think about this story that we're trying to tell here. And there is a turtle. Um, there is an alchemist who has the turtle and feeds the turtle with explosive potions. 
um, and the turtle is okay with it because it's eating explosive stuff anyway so maybe the why this how this turtle survives the explosions in its belly is through steam holes sort of like what dolphins have but for explosions and gases <laughs> so it's kind of it's kind of like a silencer on the gun just going in all directions could be could be fun if you know like if if you have this turtle you need to you know clean these things once in a while when they get stuck with the um this you know stuff for chimneys the like a big metal bowl with a brush you know chimney sweeper something like that I don't know let's indicate that there is explosions happening inside careful with this because if it explodes near you it can easily burn you this one is helping with explosives how about that all right how's it going chat Any progress so far on on pigeons and coffee or something else? All right, so we have a robot. Chad. Chad is this feed. <laughs> All right. What else? Another helping creature. <laughs> Working and getting ready. Are you going climbing? Double check this real quick. Yeah, it's close enough. I'm surprised that it's close enough actually. Didn't feel comfortable drawing the squares at all. Alright, what if we switch to this camera? So, another helping creature, we have travel helping creature, we have cleaning helping creature, we have a creature that helps with explosives. And... What else can we come up with? I also... We'll maybe go climbing today, we'll see. But the creature, that's that's what I'm trying to also think about. Just trying to lighten up the light parts so it's more clear what's going on, that it's actually an explosion happening inside the turtle.
champ. Yeah, I haven't seen Chucha today in the chat. She usually joins. I think that's, that's good enough for this explosive turtle. I also have... Uh, where is it? The um, eraser. Just a second. There you go. An eraser from... Yeah, the, these is the turtles that we will have in after a nuclear war if it happens. I hope it doesn't though. Nuclear turtles. Maybe they can produce enough energy actually to power something. Anyway. <laughs> Let's not go too much into details of this turtle thing anymore. I just can't stop drawing these lights. Okay, what, what other thing people need help with? Don't really want to draw a psychotherapist otter just because just don't want to draw an otter. Even though don't have anything against otters, they're really adorable. But there is a limit for everything. We already have kind of like a natural looking creature. Maybe this could be something more, I don't know, spooky or weird. Maybe it's like a goblin or, or, um, some sort of like a undead. Yeah, the, <laughs> this is our mascot. It's, uh, Panic Snail. Alright. Let's see what what else can we do? Yeah, let's do let's draw something a little bit maybe humanoid like. So it could be like a goblin that helps. Maybe it's like a library goblin. One, two, three, four. Library. Mm, yeah, it will be like a library goblin. He will be just holding, standing on this side and hold I think like he'll be just holding a bunch of books and giving it to the librarian to put them back an ancient giant eagle helping heroes to defeat the villain <laughs> yeah I've heard about it yesterday it was a good tale So then he's holding them like this, kind of like, I don't know, I don't, I turned off the main cam, like the overview camera for this view, turned off, I don't know if 
if it's a good idea. He's holding the books with his nose and his um, chin. He's, <laughs> his nose is so huge. to study some some anatomy <laughs> Jesus this looks cr creepy as hell what's wrong with this thing Yeah, I'm not sure about this anymore. <laughs> this doesn't look like a goblin, really. It looks like a head of a really weirdly, anatomically strange old man holding a bunch of books. Yeah, let's, you know, sometimes you need to step back and <laughs> try again. Let's try to fit, fit him first. Like, he has a big head. Like, maybe he's standing like this because he's holding a bunch of books in his hands. Like a big pile of books. And he has big hands because he's a goblin. this and then he's looking up because he's trying to give the books to his master maybe big books small books old books know why he has this kind of shoes like Aladdin style of shoes oh yeah I have the eraser from Muji and it's really good actually see him this way and the horizon line is somewhere here so all the books will have to go there as well unfortunately that's how it goes otherwise it will look really weird So that's, and then his legs are going in the same horizon line somewhere here, maybe. So the books will also use that. So it will be like this cube kind of cube of books. It really helps if you simplify stuff first. Like, you know, instead of drawing every book, just draw a whole stack of books first. Why is he a slave? <laughs> He's not a slave. He 
maybe he's a summoned creature. Like, it's created. It's a created creature. It's not the slave. He doesn't have... Maybe he doesn't even have consciousness or... Like, maybe he, his consciousness is really limited. Trying to figure out his face positioning. Okay, there is a good method that I really like uh, to draw faces. I, I'm not good at it by any means, but at least it helps to get close enough. Um, I saw it in a video by Cynics that says uh, that that's called something like um, drawing faces, something like that. And basically, the idea is that you draw like you draw the shape of an A4 page, kind of proportion-wise. Just learn to do that and divide it by three. And in the middle one and then you learn to curve it kind of and draw the same things and try like trying to keep the proportions of the page and basically what you need to learn to do is to yeah keep keep the proportions correct and keep this shape and perspective more or less correct and then what you do is you draw like a triangle here and that would be the nose then here will be the eyes and in the middle of this part will be the mouth and that's kind of like human-ish so then you can do the same in 3d and it helps to place the nose at least and you know parts of the sh of the face more or less in perspective I don't know Take a look at the video um, by Cynix, it's really helpful. I don't know. He explains it much better. But that's that's what I'm trying to use here to kind of figure out the nose and the everything. Okay. stack of books now now we can draw a little bit more details and some of the books maybe are smaller some of the books are bigger just to have some variety it, it's funny that it always comes to the number three you know, like you should have, if, if you're designing like concept art stuff, or basically if you're, if you want to have good composition, you can, like you, obviously there are millions of exceptions, but in general, like you should have medium forms and big forms and small forms. There it's three, and then you should have, you know, foreground, middle ground and background there is another three and then the way you divide the page you know there are these the rule of threes to um to find a good composition and to place dynamically all that stuff so there is like in goblin ish gnome kind of creature Helping with books. Yeah, I think 
I think now it's more understandable what's going on here. There is a cape. Let's, let's say that's that's number four and then we need two more maybe one will be like here something like here what else what else do people need help with. Probably with... Hmm. So we have a humanoid creature with a big nose. little goblin man he looks a little bit like a mouse and also he's a little bit bold so um, we have kind of like a humanoid creature we have fantasy animal we have robot we have a regular animal ish what are we missing what are we missing what other helping things can the creatures do of course the biggest tome should be on the top really I, I kind of like perspective and isometry because as soon as you establish the horizon line and the vanishing points it's so easy to put everything together and make sure that all looks at least correct in that sense in like in, in terms of perspective and I don't know I'm sometimes hesitant to do that because it seems like construction work but on the other hand like that's that what helps build a better image so I would encourage everybody to use horizon lines and all that all right creature number five ladies and gentlemen this is creature number five hmm. travel cleaning explosives library maybe a creature that helps guarding something like a guardian creature hmm. maybe it could be like a statue that's a, that's not a creature though. What would be a creature? What's the definition of creature anyway? Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, maybe the creature that helps defending something is like a bird or something like that. Or kind of like a pet that helps defending maybe like a griffon or something like that so there is there is a head with a beak and 
know, I th sometimes it's really fun to first try to draw with kind of like how how you th think it should be before you get to the um, to the references, and then you sometimes you have to change everything afterwards, but you know, at least you you can you have the opportunity to think for yourself and try to make your own educated guesses and if it doesn't work out then you learn your mistakes and if it works out then you feel really cool Oh, maybe, you know what, maybe it's the messenger seagull duck. Because it, does look, it doesn't look like a duck. Because it has the beak is too carnivores. Ducks aren't carnivores, right? But he looks like a seagull. So maybe it's like a messenger seagull with... Um, I don't know if he needs to have the message on, on the paw or in the, I don't know, on the neck maybe? Maybe he has like a tiny little backpack. something is off with this bird right like the perspective is off so i think we're looking at like the horizon line will be again using the horizon line it will be somewhere here maybe and then this will be the eyes the beak we will see some of the bottom part of the beak as well actually the positioning of the head kinda and then this will be positioning of the body or maybe even like here yeah we'll see the, the like the um, the back you know top part of the back Birds are kind of blobs, right? So it's it will be like this, I think. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. It's so messy here. Let's just delete. Delete all this area. try this it's a blob method of drawing birds <laughs> so the middle part of the bird will be like here If they will, if there would be a hard edge, but there are no hard edges on birds, kind of. So they will be just, just the 
wing. Okay. And a little then then we have space to draw a little backpack here. perspective of is the rest of the body even though like it might not be the right perspective but if everything is equally inconsistent it's better I think than having in different inconsistencies in different places It's really a fat seagull with a very strange perspective. And there are these little paws. Okay. I think. Does this look like a seagull? It does. How, how does the backpack work though? Does it have like a knot? How is the drawing on your side there? Any progress? Speaking of pigeons and coffee, this is almost like a pigeon. Ideas for for what to draw in a chiva, for instance. You said you like the idea. too much into details but we have only one creature left now let's actually research no <laughs> okay you have you have to deal with your home stuff first all right let's do research on seagulls because I'm curious about their tails Mm, they're kind of like okay not really nothing really special about their tail okay then there is one tail going kind of down and you don't even see wings really like it's it's just the color of the body that changes We can draw some of the feathers, maybe. <clears throat> okay. Something like this. Very round front. This will be messaging, uh, communication, or what does it help with? Um, communication. 
or post. Yeah, post. -ish. This is like a seagull messenger. Okay, what else? What else? Um, let's remove these construction lines or at least make them much lighter. I like the construction lines on the creature itself. I, I'm kind of sad that I removed them, but I don't like to leave the horizon line and vanishing points because it... I mean, at least on the creatures, it's okay for houses and environments, I think, but for creatures, it's usually looking a little bit weird. All right, let's switch back to this view. The only problem that the black eraser leaves this black stuff everywhere. Hmm. Who else? Who else can we draw? What would be the last creature for today? I think we will make some base on this side probably maybe we'll remove the faces although I like them maybe I'll just make them lighter we can draw another one here just to to have it let's hide the close-up camera because it's kind of on the way all right well, let's draw another What else can we have? Come on guys, fish? What fish? How, how does fish help? Mm. I have a couple of animals, we have one robot one fantasy animal, one humanoid. Don't really want another creature. I would rather have another like humanoid slash robot, I think. Don't know if robot is a creature. Does creature has to have consciousness to be considered a creature? Is it better? Or is it too dark now? I think it's a bit too dark. Or was it better before? Like this, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, I, I reset everything, sorry. Shouldn't, shouldn't change this stuff on stream. Um, anyway, sorry about that. Um, so the sixth creature, it's let's let's not do a robot. Let's do a creature. Maybe it 
the creature that doesn't help humans. Maybe it's a creature that helps other creatures. You know, like... Uh, um, some sort of like a forest creature. Maybe it's like a forest um, fairy or forest giant. Hmm. Yeah, let's let's say it's um, forest keeping. Forest keeping. That's that's what this creature will help with. And f what it will be is maybe. Flying humanoid thing. Don't know really. Just just thinking out loud. Maybe they could say humanoid creature always flying. This kind of wings? What, what are they called? The dragonfly wings? Yeah. And then we're just trying to construct this so it doesn't look too weird. Although I'm, I don't really have much experience with anatomy drawing, so. Kind of just winging it here. And with anatomy, it's really easy to mess up, I think, because we're so used to it that we easily spot the mistakes. Mm, does it have horns? Should have big ears because it's. Um, I think forest creatures often have even even some owls have ears so. They often have big ears just to be able to listen to what's going on in the forest. Maybe it's like a kind of fox, fox-like creature. <laughs> Looks like a transformer fox bot. <laughs> but what, what to do with the hands? What is it just flying around like this? How does this creature help the forest though? Let's think a little bit about that. Does it just fly and magically do stuff for the forest? Like resolve conflicts between animals, make sure nobody's like an anti monopoly <laughs> service, like make sure nobody's being too aggressive towards others or something like that. I don't know. Hmm. 
Hmm. Maybe healing the trees could be. Maybe maybe she or he. It looks more like a she to me, but I don't know. What do I know about forest creatures? Um, maybe she has like a pouch with um, herbs and things. Good thing to have. The, I'm trying to figure out where is the horizon line, but it's quite low, I think, because I don't really want to. Like, I, I want to be it to have like a feeling that you're looking from below at him or her. are too small or too big that, that hand looks stupid the back hand maybe he's like casting some magic with it or something holding maybe some a like, couple of fingers out Couple of fingers in. And there's some something healing here, like a leaf. I don't know. Maybe. Okay. I will lighten up the construction lines a little bit. on the other side and some kind of like a tool belt maybe there is uh, I don't know does he need a weapon or she does this creature don't think so maybe the magic is enough and if he needs to cut something he has the pouch everything he needs and this hand looks too big mm. really hard to draw like humanoids because it always looks weird but if you're not trying you will never get better at it so the faster you get through the annoying part the quicker you will start enjoying the process so i guess there is that Patterns on the wings. Yeah. Maybe add some. I don't know. Maybe there's like a tree standing here. No, this looks stupid. At least the grass looks stupid. The tree might be okay.
but it's too high. It needs to be much lower. Yeah, can't really draw the tree because it's the horizon line is too low. So. some ideas of trees here just to put it in a little bit in the forest situation all right yeah I think actually we're kind of done with the with the challenge here How, how is the progress on your side? Did anyone draw something? Do you like the idea of the challenge? Six something challenge? I think I will work a little bit more on the first one because it looks kind of dead. a little bit messy. And then I think today I will work more on the... I, I do think I want to color them, or at least some of them, and I definitely want to ink every one of them, because that will really help with um, making them visible. <laughs> on the photo basically. And then I can also go more into some details and other stuff. Does the pigeon help with the party? Or what's his feature? for today I will work on this a little bit more I will do the inking at least and then upload it on Instagram if you have drawn something during this stream feel free to add the hashtag peace sketchbook stream helps to party <laughs> all right if you want to share your um, party pigeon you can send it to our uh, telegram channel where we do discussion and notifications and then I can show it on stream if you want to helicopter but in the meantime yeah this was six something challenge feel free to uh, pick your own topics and practice it as often as you like. You can do it like once a day, or you can do six during the whole day or whatnot. Anyway, uh, thank you all for watching. I will most likely see you all next week and I hope you have a nice day, nice week, and I see you all next time. Same time, same place. Thank you and bye-bye. Have a good day.